This is the Tech 21 Sanzan programmable base driver DI, and I'm going to talk about today and show you some with some sound examples just how awesome this thing is. It is a great one-stop solution for playing bass live if you need some drive and EQ and also XLR out. Um, it can also work with your amp in conjunction with the live out by using this to go to the front of house and this side to go to your amp. Some really cool features on it. Uh, one like I mentioned, XLR out. One really cool thing is you can hit this button and then it actually powers the pedal via phantom power provided by your PA, your mixer, uh, which is really, really dope. So there's actually three ways of powering it. There's the 48 volt phantom power connection. There's also nine volt center negative DC power. And then additionally, a battery door on the back where you can put a nine volt battery in there. Super sick. The big claim to fame on this thing is it provides a really nice grind, um, you know, some really nice overdrive that can get quite nasty if you like, but it's smooth in character, reminiscent of an SVT style amp uh, from Ampeg. Um, and the the big benefit is that you have three presets so you can you have one two three it's really easy to program you just dial in the sound that you want um dial in the sound that you want and then once you've dialed that sound in you just double press the pre the preset you would like to save it under and it'll save it under two if i press two twice or three or you know whatever so you just press it twice and then the light will flash and stuff so the I.O., like I said, we get a balanced XLR out, a quarter inch uh, output, a nine volt DC input, a quarter inch input, a battery door on the bottom, and that's all your I.O. The pedal is made of metal. It's pretty sturdy. It has some kind of sharp edges here. Some of the corners are a little sharp, um, but it's, it's very well built, and I have no doubts about the ruggedness of it i think you'd probably jump on it it would probably survive at least most of the time the controls are pretty simple we have three buttons here which are all kind of boosts or volume or power related um, they're not related to the sound and then all your sound controls are right here and then the foot switches just turn on or off each preset you can't stack the presets it's just preset one on or off and so you bypass the pedal by clicking whatever button um, you have selected for the whatever preset you have selected so whatever light is on you just press that button and it turns off controls from left to right we have drive which controls the the breakup of the drive circuit or of the sans amp of the sans amp circuit so it goes from completely clean through to uh, pretty dang compressed and filthy um, and everything in between, of course. You have a bass control, which is a nice low shelf control. It really adds a pleasing amount of bass for f at least four string basses. It's really, really great. You just take it unity and then push it up a little bit and it's just, mmm, makes your jazz or precision bass just sound so good. You have a treble control, which is nice kind of control that high end, the kind of clack um, and, and, the, and the sharp treble. Um, you can make it really cut through or you can warm it up there's also presence control which um, is a little bit higher frequency so it can kind of deal with uh, string noise pick pick noise pick attacks that kind of thing up there so it's nice that you have these two separate ones i think because you can smooth it out but then bring out the pick attack or you can have a brighter tone and pull out the pick attack to reduce that if you want the blend knob is really useful because this blends how much of the drive circuit is in your signal path that's zero and as you turn it up it's going to be more and I, I believe the eq just affects the blendable side not the other side so if you turn all the way this way i don't think any of these do anything but as you turn it up it's going to add more blended more of the driven and eq tone and then finally we have an output level um, of course so this is just a knob to control how much volume there is and then over here, we have the phantom and ground connect. So pressing the switch in um, will basically mean that the pedal will be powered by the phantom power coming in through the XLR cable and not through anything else. So this could be nice if you have a battery in here and you want to leave it plugged in just to save power. You can just click this switch on and it'll shut everything off unless you're sending phantom power in. 
uh, or use it the opposite way if you're in the studio and you have an XLR cable connected. You don't want to turn off phantom power on your device. You just hit this button and it shuts, shuts it right down. But it's really great. That way it doesn't introduce ground loops or any wacky stuff um, when you're running phantom power. Um, XLR out pad. So if you need to send quite a lot of level to your amplifier to get the sound that you want and the sound engineer is going, ah, it's clipping my preamp. You just hit this button, takes care of it. I've found that I have to leave it engaged most of the time because the signal coming out of here is so hot. Alternatively, if that's still not enough to pad the XLR output and your amp output still isn't enough, you can also hit this quarter inch out boost to provide more signal output from this output. That's really great. Cool. So that's all the controls. Um, and like I said, you can assign the presets to whatever sound you want. Um, and the pedal alerts you when you've changed something from the preset, from a preset setting by making whatever preset you have engaged light will flash when you turn the knobs. Let's say the initial preset was like this, and we're on preset one, and I start turning the knob. This light's going to flash until I put the knob back or until I double click and then it will be solid, right? So that's just indicating that you're on a sound that's not a preset. Let's go hear the pedal. Um, we'll hear some sound samples.
Okay, in conclusion, the Tech21 Sans Amp Programmable Bass Driver DI is a really great tool for live use. I really like it. Um, have I played live with it? Not really, because I'm mostly playing guitar live. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but I do think it's really fantastic. Uh, the presets just add so much flexibility because you can go... Um, I don't want very much drive, but I do want the EQ that this thing offers. And then I can go, you know, I want a little bit more grind for, you know, a slightly louder song. And then I can hit this button for like the, the thickest possible sound with a lot of drive and a lot of bass and all that. So you can kind of change it up, you know, uh, depending on, on what you like. And yeah, it's big, but, you know, this thing can do so much stuff. It replaces all the drive pedals, the DIs on your pedal board, and it just can, it can do a lot of stuff. And it's not too expensive either. It's, it's easy to get a really great sound. I think my only complaints are the noise, and then also there's there is some filtering in the top end to make it sound like an Ampeg SVT, and I do wish that you could turn that off to make the sound a little bit brighter and more aggressive. All right, bye.